Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, the impact plated finishes have on RF PCB performance at millimeter wave frequencies. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about the impact that plated finish has on PCB high frequency performance, specifically at millimeter wave frequencies. Now this is the second video on the topic. I've uh, had another Coonrod's Corner on this topic about two years ago and that was called the impact of uh, final plated finishes on PCB performance. However, it was not really focused on millimeter wave. So this video is going to focus more on millimeter wave. It would, it would be a good idea to go ahead and look at the previous video to get some of the basics. And I will go through some of the basics here uh, in just a moment. In the previous Coonrod's Corner video on this topic, I gave several examples of how the final plated finish can impact the conductor losses. And conductor losses, as you're probably aware, is a component of overall loss, which is insertion loss. And what we found was a thinner circuit is more impacted by the effects of a difference in conductor loss, in this case, the plated finish, as compared to a thicker circuit. And the chart that I'm showing here is really transmission lines that were built on the exact same material, except the material had different thicknesses, and also some circuits were bare copper circuits, and some circuits had eneg plating, which is electrous nickel immersion gold. And the comparison shows that the thicker circuit, which is about 20 mil thick, that is the blue curve for the bare copper circuit, red curve for the circuit with eneg, there's a difference about 0.21 dB per inch at 25 gigahertz. Now using the same material, but thinner, the thinner circuit is showing differences of 0.38 dB per inch difference at 25 gigahertz. And the green curve is a bare copper circuit and the purple curve is the circuit with the eneg finish. Now eneg is used a lot in the industry. It is a very good plating finish for a lot of things, but the designers really need to be aware that it will cause more losses. And specifically, it's causing more conductor losses. The choice of the test vehicle for this type of study is actually very important and we looked at a several different test vehicles and we decided to use a microstrip transmission line and there are several reasons for that and one of the most important reasons is that the microstrip transmission line is less impacted by some of the variables in making the circuit. Now we know that a thinner circuit also is uh, more susceptible to differences of the conductor so we purposely used a thinner substrate and also we know that rolled copper is the smoothest copper that we can find and the copper surface roughness is also important. So rolled copper having a very smooth roughness, that means from one circuit to another, the surface roughness of the rolled copper is gonna be very consistent. So we're not gonna see differences due to the copper roughness that would corrupt the data we're trying to look at, which is the conductor effects due to the plated finish. And then lastly, we wanted to use a material that was extremely low in losses to minimize the dielectric losses, which again, we're trying to exaggerate the conductor losses so we can see differences of these different final plated finishes. So that's what we've done for a test vehicle. And there's also concerns of uh, what type of test vehicle, microstrip, grounded coplanar waveguide, strip line. And let me show you a quick overview of that. Shown here are two cross-sectional views of circuits. The one on the left is a microstrip circuit. The one on the right is a tightly coupled grounded coplanar waveguide. Now we know that the uh, grounded coplanar waveguide is more sensitive to copper plating and other type of effects of, the, uh, of making the circuit, but also the grounded coplanar waveguide is very sensitive to plated finishes. And the difference between microstrip and grounded coplanar waveguide, when one finish is applied that is lossy, you will see some increase in insertion loss on the microstrip, but you'll see much greater increase in insertion loss with the grounded coplanar waveguide structure. So ideally, you might think that the grounded coplanar waveguide would be a good test vehicle, but in reality, um, that's true for the plated finish, but unfortunately, it's also influenced by many other things in building the circuit, such as copper plating thickness variation, trapezoidal effects, etching. So we decided to use the test vehicle that is most robust to being consistent uh, in making the circuit and having less influences due to making the circuit, and that is the microstrip transmission line shown on the left. A final plated finish that is applied to the copper of the circuit does have normal variation, as does anything in making a circuit. So the eneg, or electrous nickel immersion gold, or whatever plated finish is being applied, that thickness of eneg will vary from one circuit to another, and that's normal. But to understand those differences can be really important, especially at millimeter wave frequencies. Essentially at lower frequency, microwave range possibly, 
uh, these thickness variations uh, can still be seen, but it's usually less problematic as compared to millimeter wave, where the circuit, is, again, is using higher frequency, which means smaller wavelength, and it's much more sensitive to any kind of differences. So let's go ahead and take a look at some charts that I have comparing differences in plated finish on our test vehicle. This chart is comparing uh, microstrip circuits, and it's three circuits that are based on the exact same material, 5 mil RO3003 laminate with rolled copper. And uh, the microstrip circuits on bare copper is the blue curve, the microstrip circuits using ENEG with thin nickel plating is the orange curve, and the gray curve is also ENEG, but in this case the nickel is plated very thick. And you can see, to begin with, there's a pretty big difference between the bare copper circuit and either one of the ENIG curves. So ENIG most certainly does increase in the overall insertion loss. And you can also see there's a pretty significant difference between the orange curve and the gray curve, which is the difference in nickel thickness only. And these differences in nickel thickness are actually within the range to be expected. So if you look at many circuits off a large volume production, you will see some differences due to this nickel varying in thickness. And the difference is here at 60 gigahertz is about a difference of 0.2 dB per inch for insertion loss. Now looking at the same comparison, but using a different test vehicle just to prove the point of some differences that you can see with grounded coplanar waveguide as compared to microstrip, you can see that the bare copper circuit compared to the circuit with thin nickel and thick nickel, there's a much bigger difference. Also, the y-axis scale is different than the previous slide. The previous slide with microstrip, the y-axis was from 0 to 2.5 dB per inch for losses. This scale for grounded coplanar waveguide circuits is from 0 to 3.25. So in general, a grounded coplanar waveguide does have more losses due to the application of the ENEG to the circuit. And as I mentioned, the microstrip circuit at 60 gigahertz, the difference between thin and thick nickel plating was 0.2 dB per inch at 60 gigahertz. And at that same frequency for grounded coplanar waveguide, the difference between thin and thick nickel is 0.6 dB per inch difference. So that's about three times the difference when using the same material but a different design. This has been the grounded coplanar waveguide design. Many of the millimeter wave applications that we've been working at Rogers uh, are 77 gigahertz automotive radar applications. And most of these applications are not using ENIG, electrus nickel emerging gold. I gave several examples of circuits using ENIG because that plated finish is actually used in a lot of applications. However, for automotive radar, mostly what we see is a plated finish uh, using immersion tin or immersion silver. Now, in the case of immersion tin and immersion silver, there is also thickness variation to be expected from circuit to circuit. However, thankfully, the immersion tin immersion silver is very thin. It's plated much, much thinner than ENEG, which means whatever thickness variation that you will experience will be much less. So using immersion tin or immersion silver at millimeter, millimeter wave frequencies is actually desired because you're going to have less variation from circuit to circuit due to the plated finish thickness varying. The graph shown here is the same type of uh, testing I showed previously with ENEG, except in this case we're looking at immersion 10 and also different thicknesses of the immersion 10. The test vehicle remains the same. It's 5 mils thick, RL3003 materials with rolled copper. It's a microstrip transmission line. The light blue curve is the insertion loss of the circuit with bare copper only. And then the green curve is a thin thickness of immersion 10, and the dark blue curve is thick thickness of immersion 10. And you can see there is some differences, as should be expected, but not near as much as uh, the case that we looked at previously with ENIG. In this case, the difference at 60 gigahertz is 0.12 dB per inch between the thin and thick immersion 10. And again, going back to the ENIG on the same test vehicle, we saw a difference of 0.2 dB per inch difference at 60 gigahertz. So immersion 10 does have less thickness variation, and due to that, it causes less variation of the circuit. This concludes this episode of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.